Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another video. I hope you're all doing very good indeed. If it's your first time on the channel, my name is Shao TV, a financial economist based in Canada. Now, you might have noticed that gold prices have jumped significantly over the last couple of weeks, reaching historical highs that were lasting in the 1980s. Now, you might have also come across and noticed news and headlines about the US dollar being under decline and is expected to fall even further. So guys, gold prices are rising, US dollar is on the decline with a yield curve that's at some of its lowest in the history. Bond prices are rising and we have a stock market that's completely ignoring the current economic crisis we are in, registering higher highs every day. Now all this coupled with an economic recession that gave birth to the highest increase in unemployment levels since the Great Depression, falling income, falling consumer expenditure, and many retail businesses going out of business. Now I know it all sounds confusing, but in this video we are going to look at economic indicators and metrics to see why gold prices have been rising and its implications, of course, for the future of the stock market. But guys, please, before we go ahead, please take a moment to smash the like button and subscribe to our channel if you find this video valuable because that will help us out bring you more educational and valuable videos like this one on a more regular basis. Well, anyways, guys, with that out the door, let's get to the analysis. So anyway, guys, we have a lot to discuss today, so let's get to the analysis. So guys, the answer to why gold prices is going up can't really be summarized in a sentence as you would expect. So first, let's start by having a look at the latest GDP data for the US, and then I'll highlight the main areas of concern when it comes to the fundamentals of US economy and perhaps the world economy. And finally, that will help us understand why gold prices are going up as investors look for safety. Uh, this is interesting because stock market is going up, so the economy should be doing okay, making investment in safety a redundant strategy. But as we know by now, while the US markets have been hitting all-time highs, the economy has been declining even before the second round of lockdowns due to the spike in cases across the US. So the US economy suffered its sharpest downturn since the late at least 1940s in the second quarter, demonstrating how the pandemic has ravaged businesses and the economy across the country. Gross domestic products for the GDP, GDP dropped by a whopping 32.9% in Q2, and nothing experts, investors or Wall Street experts did not expect. However, this is an annualized rate of GDP decline, meaning this is by how much the economy would contract if the measures to contain the virus did not work by the end of the year. Okay, but if you look at the figures in quarter per quarter basis, the economy has actually declined but only around 9%. It is a still a very terrible number, I understand that, but the US economy did not exactly lose a third of its value in this quarter, just, just, just to put things in perspective. Now, more importantly though, the speed and magnitude of the pandemic impact has rendered old news like quarterly GDP especially dated, as renewed surges in infections prompt states and businesses to roll back openings. Now, Gregory Dacko, chief US economist at Oxford Economics, actually believes the GDP report is meaningless since it just shows us the hole we are in, but little does it say about where we are and where we are headed. Now, so if the annualized GDP report wasn't precise, how to gauge the economy and examine its impact on the future of the stock market? Well, before we look at some more indicators, we all know that the stock market doesn't really reflect the state of the economy, especially for the last couple of months. There has been a significant divergence in terms of where the economy and the stock markets are heading. Tech stocks have been hitting all times highs while more people are unemployed and more people are earning less. How does that make sense? Well, let's discuss this. So the Bureau of Economic Analysts said on Friday that income across households, American households, declined by 1.1% in June from May, coming out slightly worse than 0.8% rate of decline economies polled by FactSet. Now, that's of course as government's aid program payments, the one-time stimulus checks, as you probably heard, fall from May, particularly partially offset by increase in compensation as businesses reopen and rehired. Even with partial reopenings, though, in oversleep, we saw a decline in income by 1.1%. Now, the data also showed that consumer spending did rise in June by 5.6% slightly better than expected, but still down substantially from its 8.5% pace in May. Now, why is that worrying? Well, because why the GDP decline, as expected of course, more worryingly, Americans' income declined from May, but also consumer spending has started to slow down. That's a red flag, because data is from before the renewed second round of lockdown started due to the spread of virus across the US. It also makes the second round of stimulus checks even more vital for the future of the economy as well as the markets. Because the extra $600 per week is in assistance is actually helping pluck the massive income and spending hole for the 30% 30 million Americans out of work. 
Now, to make things even worse, last Thursday, Labour Department reports also showed application for jobless benefit rose for the second consecutive week and claims continue to hold at around 1 million per week. Now, dealing with these numbers for any economist is mind-boggling, believe me. A million people per week are applying for jobless benefits. Staggering numbers. Anyhow, now Congress and Senate are still working out a deal, but the previous assistance program expired last Friday. Uh, given its importance, I believe we will see something very similar back on the track um, for the third quarter to stabilise the economy and prevent things from worsening. Um, now, I'm currently based in Canada, and Canada has also not extended the $2,000 monthly payment on Canadian Emergency Response, Response Benefit, or SERB, either, but has promised to extend its employment insurance to accept a broader range of people affected by the virus, which shows how governments are concerned and are planning to extend and extend in terms of time frame and a broader range of people um, when it comes to assistance just to make sure that all this money that was spent by the government doesn't go away okay because if they stop the payments um, the economy is going to take a turn for the worse and they don't want that to happen and they have to keep the payments going on now as we discussed these annualized data are very much old news and don't really affect the current state of the economy meaning we should look for more current up-to-date data to examine the state of the economy and one of the main real-time indicators of the state of economy is New York Fed's weekly economic index, a basket of 10 daily and weekly indicators of real economic activity, including jobless, including jobless claims, federal taxes withheld to fuel sales, and railroad traffic. Now, the latest reading of about 7% shows that the economy is springing up from April lows, but still far, 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 far away from the pre-pandemic levels indeed. For comparison, it was only 2% in the beginning of February this year. Another strong real-time indicator is the economic tracker from Opportunity Insights, part of Harvard University. It considers daily data for small businesses that make up half the US employment, half the GDP, and 40% of total business revenue. Now, unfortunately, improvement in small business revenue has started to fade now from 17% in January as the number of small businesses that are open are failing, a signal of business failures as the crisis continues. The prospects don't look any better given the expansion of lockdowns across the United States. Basically what it means, even though the government is paying, giving all this financial assistance to a small business to stay open, um, they did open, but there was no demand for it. And the cost was just so much more than the financial assistance by the government. So even though they received all this financial assistance, they had to go out of business. And that's a big loss, not only for the business, that to lay off people and close the business, taking away a part of the GDP increasing unemployment level, but all this money that's given by the government to these small businesses is also going to waste because, you know, they couldn't stay afloat, unfortunately. A daily consumer, spend, consumer spending data doesn't seem to be doing too well either. Spending did recover, so it was done, it was around 4 point, down 3, 4.3% from January, but now it's down 6.4% versus January, a sign of worsening economy and consumer confidence. As a result, small businesses' revenue has also declined, um, and it is a self-sustaining damn loop for the economy, unfortunately. Now, we are not done with the indicators, guys, but I promise you'll get to why gold is going up. These are all contributing factors, which we will put in perspective very shortly. So, as you might have noticed, US dollar has also been plunging over the last couple of weeks. Now, this could be a correction, as US dollar has been pretty much rising since mid-2011. Why now, you may ask? Well, maybe global investors are losing a little faith in how the US has handled um, and manage its virus situation, which is what has led to economic uncertainty. Now, with lockdown expanding across the US, consumer spending slowing, saving rates rising, interest rates remaining historically low, and the stock market probably the most overvalued and expensive it has ever been, where should we invest for safety? You guessed it right. That's the answer you've been waiting all this video for. It is gold. Good old gold. Now, gold has always been a major attraction for investors, but it's very hard to make more of it unlike the dollar and other paper currencies. Newly mined metal adds less than 2% each year to the roughly 6 billion ounces currently in the world. So with demand spiking up so quickly, there is no wonder $2,000 per ounce price point is not unachievable given the current economic circumstances. Now, there are many ways to play gold for you who are interested in investing in diversifying your portfolio. Uh, you can include ETFs like the iShare Gold Trust, a ticker symbol IAU, as well as mining stocks, um, ETFs, of course, led by Vanek Vectors Gold Miners ETF, ticker symbol GDX, or if you're a risk taker, perhaps Vanek Vectors Junior Gold Miners ETF, GDXJ. So guys, this is exactly why gold prices have been going up. The economy is not doing well, 
uh, the Federal Reserve have printed trillions of dollars into the economy. Interest rates are very low. Bond prices are very going up. The yield curve is as lowest ever in the history um, of our economy. And investors have sort of lost faith in how the US has managed um, the virus situation. So the only place to go to for safety, if anything goes bad, is gold, good old gold. And we know that the stock market is is the most expensive you've ever seen when you compare the rate um, the earnings to the, the price to earning ratio so investors are still shaky they're not sure about the future and this level of um, uncertainty has led to people investing more in gold and as i said um, you know more money is going um, is being printed more money is going into gold investments and there's only two percent um, of gold that's been added to the current stock that is available in the world so the price, of course, would jump significantly. And we have so much more money now uh, and more money investors um, and population in general than we had in the 1980s. So the price should go up uh, perhaps even further. Topping 2000 would not be unachievable. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching and I will see you all in the next one.